I thought Keith asked me to come to this First Avenue experiment, experience as they called it, back in the day with Bernie Sanders as Bernie was running for president. And I thought that um, Keith getting his party under control, making them vote his way, was now infringing upon my rights. And I wholeheartedly believe that Keith Ellison has been putting my son and my daughter up to do things. Giving me that picture of my grandson, that shit hurt like a motherfucker. I don't know why it hurt other than I'm not a grandma. And I don't acknowledge being a grandma based on the fact that, like I said, Sue Masik. Somewhere along the line, me and my kids' lives was disrupted. And I thought they were used for Bobby and Keith's purposes where they were now guided. And as they were guided, they were influencing my behavior because the closest people to me was my kids. I would die for my kids and I would die now. I'd like to die. I wish I had a fucking bottle of 1800 and I would fucking drink it, right? Why would I drink it? Well, I want to punish Sharon. Sharon is tired, right? Sharon said that they had been doing these political things behind her back for years and she didn't know about it and as they were doing them her ex was helping Michael Cooper senior and as Michael Cooper senior started to help I thought well maybe he was dating somebody from his early days with the shotgun crips which now infringed upon my rights I thought of Andrea Faulkner I thought of punkin my cousin you know, she told me Nichelle Miller hated me. She said, Sharon, stop hanging with Nichelle because Nichelle hates you. I sat over there, got drunk with this bitch, Sharon, as your cousin. But I thought, you know, she told me about Aunt Sis. And if it wasn't for her gossiping about Aunt Sis, I probably would have went out to eat with Aunt Sis. But they talked about Aunt Sis so bad, they influenced my behavior. So I thought, I wonder how bad Punk and Linda T.D. Puddin Jr. could influence people in their behavior by just gossiping, right? So the first thing I did was ask Mr. Howard, Mr. Sullivan, was Anitria Baker, as well as Oriana Baker, was Shonda Smith Baker at, you know, Cooper gossiping, right? I said, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Opal, if these people have said some things about me and my kids, please let me know. Why? Because we got rights. I have a right to discuss anything that they've said about me and my children. And as I wanted to discuss what they said about me and my children, that meant that the truth would come out and it would now not be behind closed doors. Mr. Opal, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Favors could not discuss what other people had said, right? But they were now, as a brotherhood, I felt, ganging up on me and my children. I can't stand Keith Ellison. I wish I could fucking drink. I wish I had some 1800 right now to ease my soul. I can't smoke weed because they said I'm not thinking right. They said I'm not agreeing to a deal that I probably would have been a part of, but for my settlements do me. So any reparations that was due me was separate and aside from my fucking settlements. So I should have got them but in retrospect, looking back when that man put the word slave on his face because he said that he was bound to a contract where he couldn't write, produce, play music as he wanted to under the Prince label. He changed his name to a symbol. I don't know who his attorneys was, but I started to think that people from my neighborhood, Keith, Bobby, Spike, Don, helped him. And he was indebted to them, Suge. I didn't have dreams and aspirations of owning a store. I thought about my mom. Did my mom owe anybody for a store? Her dream to open a store? Her private silent investor began to stand out with me. Her debt, not me. I stood there and I helped her, but it had nothing to do with me. Did my mom owe her silent investor? Because you know when you silently invest dope money? I thought that when you silently invested dope money and that shit was gone, it was fucking gone, man. 
I started to ask, did you say I owed you for debts they created, right? So they gave me a picture of my grandson, Zymir Delon Cooper, my firstborn grandchild, and that shit cut me, Michaela, like a knife in my motherfucking back, bitch. <laughs> I thought about not being a grandparent for day. How I couldn't, you know, have all those wonderful toys. Do you know how proud I was to have that Easter motherfucking barbecue? We got pictures of that Easter barbecue, don't we? Huh. I even did an Easter egg hunt. Not with money, just little trinkets that kids should get. Not $50 bills, not $100 bills in the eggs. Just $1.50. Things they should be looking for. Because people are like, you know, 12, 13-year-olds don't want an Easter egg hunt. But if you put a $100 bill in there, they might go knock down a 4-year-old to get the fucking Easter egg. Because they might have a fucking $100 bill in that bitch where a 4-year-old don't know it's 100 But a 12, 13-year-old fucking does, right? You're gonna tear it down? You gonna leave the wall right there? Is it ever gonna be utilized to capacity that it was built? Have we ever filled up this motherfucking parking lot? And it goes way down there. Have we ever filled that parking lot up? I wonder. And then have everybody in that parking lot then went across the street to the place that it was designated to be built for? Because you know it's not near the, you know, what is it, U.S. Bank Stadium? But it's near the transit, you know, green-blue line, that subway we bought. You could subway your ass down here from the, you know, U.S. Bank Stadium. Is there a train that gets us to the XL Energy? Do we have one fucking state-ran fucking place where again the state utilizes the money from the entertainment our football basketball motherfucking baseball brings to the city the funds it generates nah we don't get that luxury do we nah we didn't invest in our vikings in our timber wolves in our lynx those are privately owned people right they own those people and they're just here with us Right?